the Spring Media Day with ONW Sports. Uh, first off, we'd like to thank all the athletics teams for joining us today and taking some time out of their lunch schedule. I'm Jack Clayton, I'll be your host throughout today, and we are starting off with Coach Smith and the tennis team. Uh, last season was a really great season for the tennis team. They were well represented at regionals with Brett Seaton representing ONW in singles and David Boschma and Tommy Fernhaber uh, playing in the doubles match. So, Coach Smith, would you like to open us up with a statement? Uh, yeah, so last year was a successful season. Um, all of those guys you mentioned that were successful at the uh, regional and state level are no longer with the program through graduation and uh, moving on to uh, the new school. Uh, but we've got some guys who have uh, some success at the varsity level returning. Two of them are over here to my, my left. Uh, and we've got a bunch of uh, young guys who've worked really hard, who are year-round tennis players, who are gonna make an immediate impact as freshmen and sophomores. So we're, we're really excited about the, the upcoming year. All right, we'll now open up to questions from the reporters. So as this season um, comes to a start, what's gonna be your biggest challenge? Uh, we have a lot of new players, so probably making sure that they know how to play at their best capacity is probably our uh, biggest challenge right now. Can I also yeah, answer yeah, go ahead. Okay, yeah, so it's kind of uh, building some chemistry at first, um, especially with like the doubles, obviously singles, you don't necessarily need that, but at least for me, kind of, I haven't had a whole lot of opportunities to play with my doubles partners, so kind of just having that chemistry, building those relationships on the team, because we do have a lot of new people, so. Well, yeah, th those guys mentioned we have a lot of new faces, but we're also running the team differently than uh, the previous uh, years. Uh, we operate, we don't really, to have varsity and JV separated. We all practice as one big group. We do drills together from one through 21. You might be playing against um, people of a variety of skill levels. And so we're really trying to build a team. And yesterday we played a, a giant game of tennis where literally the fence was the net. Um, so, and it's a totally unrelated to tennis, but trying to build some, some team atmosphere. Okay, and this is a question personally for the coach. Um, as your first year coaching, what are you most excited about? Uh, it gives me something to look forward to at the end of every school day, something a little bit different. You know, I've got 21 guys who really want to be where they are every day, um, and so it's just really exciting. Um, I've been an assistant before, so I've kind of coached other sports, um, so I, I, I knew what I was missing, and I'm, I'm really glad to, uh, to be back, to be head coaching. Um, Organizing practices takes a lot of time, figuring out who's gonna play where, uh, who's gonna be doubles partner with who, but uh, I'm, I'm a planner and organizer, so I actually really like doing all that stuff. So, Chris and Tolo, this is for both of you. With having a new coach this season, how do you think that's gonna relate into your gameplay? Well, I think uh, we definitely did have some, we had some bonds with the coaches from last year, but uh, I actually have him as a teacher, so that's not necessarily going to be a problem for me. But I think, I mean, really just going to practice every day and coming with him, he's a super likable guy. I mean, it's not really going to be anything different. So, I mean, I think it's definitely going to work well for us this year. So it shouldn't be anything different than last year. Chris, Chris, I'm glad you said that. Thank you. <laughs> Took the words right out of my mouth. Completely agree. Okay. Um, so you've been practicing for a while now. How do you think this season is going to go? Um, I, I'm trying to put things in perspective. I mean, we, we lost the guy who would have won 6A state this year. Um, so I, I cannot expect our team to have as much success individually as we had last year. Um, but I do expect us to perform pretty well. My goal is like top half of Sunflower League. You know, my goal is second in the Olathe City meet. My goal is to get somebody to the state tournament, which I think those are, those are all, tennis is a tough sport in our area um, of the state, so those are all achievable but difficult goals. So I think they're realistic, but we're gonna have to work our butts off to get there. So seniors, what are you gonna miss about the team when you're gone next year? Uh, I'm probably gonna miss all the bonds I've made with the other seniors and I guess the other players on the team. Uh, I'm going to miss playing tennis at this school. It's been a pretty great experience. and I'll probably try to play intramural in college, but it won't quite be the same. 
I think I'm going to miss kind of just traveling to the matches, um, especially the ones that are farther away. Um, yeah, just kind of like what he said, the camaraderie and everything, um, just the relationships I've built with the people. Um, and I actually haven't had an experience yet to have like an overnight tournament or somewhere that far away, so hopefully I have an opportunity to do that this year, but definitely miss that. All right, and that's all the time we have for the tennis team. Thank you guys for coming out and for supporting Media Day. We're going to send it to a quick commercial, and we'll be right back after the break. <laughs> All right, welcome back to the 2017 Spring Media Day. I'm now joined by the girls swim and dive team with Coach Branstrom, Lauren Pugh, and Maddie Fentiman. Uh, last season, the girls had a great swim and dive season. They, uh, sorry about that. They sent several swimmers to state where they took sixth as a team and had a great, great season. So, Coach, open it up to you. Have any statements you'd like to get out there before the reporters ask some questions? Um, no, tonight is our first meet for the season, so we're excited about that. Um, we are hosting the, the Olathe City Meet. Um, we are a different team this year than last year. We lost about half of our team because of Olathe West opening up and the seniors that graduated, and so we are a young team and trying to rebuild what we have here, but it's a good group of kids instead of having kind of the big gap between the fast and slower we're all kind of at the same speed which makes it fun for practices to be able to have everybody going at the same time um, they're a good group they get along well they're fun to be around and so we're just excited to start our meets and get the season going all right, well now we'll open it up to reporters for some questions. All right, so leading up to this point um, for tonight, your meet, um, how hard have you guys prepared to work really hard to get to this point? Um, well, our team has morning practice twice a week and we've been doing practices every day after school and Saturday practices. So we've done a lot of training, we've done a lot of sprints to get um, worked up to this point and been training hard these past three weeks. Um, individually, what do you guys want to improve on this season? Um, individually, uh, I want to improve on the dives I already have. I don't necessarily want to learn anything new right now. Um, I just want to perfect what I already have. For me, individually, I'd like to improve my times, obviously, and um, I start off the blocks just to get a better head start of everybody else. Um, for the coach, what are your goals this season for the team? Uh, for the team, again, just because we've got a lot of new kids in there, just to kind of redevelop our program, and and um, but just to have them individually bond together as a team, that makes it more fun for them when they enjoy being around each other, but also just to see them, see how the hard work pays off, and, and to enjoy the meets because they can see what they've been working on and how it does pay off. As a team, how do you guys all want to um, improve on? As a team, we all need to improve on our underwaters for the swimmers and um, get some relays up there with good time so we can take a couple relays to state. For diving, um, I think as a team, we need to work on our mentality towards our diving because, I mean, it's a scary sport, like 70%, it's just in your mind. So we need to work on just pu pushing past that. Um, do you guys have a really good chance at making it to state this year? personally or um, well as a team I'd say we have a good chance of bringing about four girls so far 
for swimming, we have um, a very high chance of taking three relays to state in all of our relays, and we have a couple girls that can qualify individually again. Are you guys planning on taking your athletic career after high school? No, <laughs> I won't be swimming after high school. Um, not for diving, no. Um, so both of you as seniors, like what legacy do you guys want to leave, leave behind for the team? Um, I want to leave behind like a positive attitude towards the swim team and having like the swim team be something enjoyable you want to come to every day as practice. So just leaving a good legacy that it's a fun sport to do and very interactive. Um, I want to leave that um, having each practice fun and not get so scared and worried about each dive you're doing. Just have fun with it. Coach, will there be any new practices, um, any new routines you want to the swimmers or divers to do to improve on? Any, I'm sorry, can you? New routines, if there's any like new um, strokes you Well, there, yeah, I mean there's, well, last year we kind of worked on and we'll continue to work on this year is just getting them to be able to hold their splits and, and so everybody has pretty good 50 splits and we need to be able to hold that for the, the 100, the 200, and the 500 and so that's what we work on is just trying to be faster or longer and so that they can improve those times and then trying to figure out with our new kids where they fit and where they're the best at so that we can spread everybody out. We don't want to have everybody swimming the 50 and the 100 freestyle. We want to develop the different strokes so that we can pull some of our other relays in there and stuff. So that's what we'll be focusing the most. Tonight will kind of show us where people are and, and who's going to excel because sometimes people just do a little bit better at the meets than they do in practice and stuff. And so tonight will kind of show us where we are at this point. So. I do have a question. Since both of you guys are seniors, uh, your senior teammate, Lexi Cooper, what does she bring to the team? Yeah. Yeah, so Lexi Cooper, um, Lexi's a very positive person, and she makes practice ten times more enjoyable because she probably has one of the best attitudes on our team. She's always very positive and sees the bright side of everything. So with swimming being a really hard sport, it gets tiring, and you don't want to be there sometimes, but she makes it a lot better. Yes, Lexi brings super positive attitudes towards us. Like if I walk into practice one day and I'm having the worst day ever, I look at Lexi and she'll just say something to me and my day is made, 100%. All right, and that's all the time we have for questions today. Uh, thank you to the Swim and Dive team for coming out. We really appreciate it. We'll send it to another quick commercial. We'll be back in just a minute. Welcome back to the Spring Media Day. We're now joined by the golf team and Coach Grove, along with Jackson Wexler, Zach Moser, and Cole Ferris. You were in my math class. That's really disappointing. All right. Last year, the golf team. <laughs> last year, the golf team took third in regionals and went on to take seventh at state. With Jackson Wexler, a senior this season, tying for eighth place individually. Uh, Coach, would you have anything that you'd like to say before we open up for questions? Um, got a great group of guys. Um, guys that are working hard to get better each and every week, and. Um, um, you know, they're trying to continue to carry on the legacy we have here. I think uh, we've qualified for the state term, I believe, uh, 12 or 14 years, and we're, that's our goal this year is to get there and try to win another state championship. All right, well, now I'll open it up to questions from the reporters. All right, Coach, uh, what are your expectations this year for your golfers, and uh, who are some to look out for? Well, expectation, and we talk about it all the time, is just each and every week um, trying to get better. Um, better with our practice habits, um, try to better our scores and lower those, and then, um, you know, try to be our best at the end of the year. And uh, we got a good group of guys and guys that I think that we can do that with. And expectations are to win. Uh, that's why we spend, 
nights until 6, 6.30 at the golf course, and that's to try to win and, and get better. Who do you guys really, oh, sorry. <clears throat> Who do you guys really compete against? Like what teams like really like give you a hard time like when you're playing? Uh, well, Shawnee Mission East is always really good. Uh, Blue Valley North has got a good team. Uh, Shawnee Mission East didn't lose any uh, seniors last year, so they're all uh, pretty good. And they all uh, shoot relatively low scores, so they're all really consistent and just give us a run for our money. Yeah, I'd say uh, Shawnee Mission East is definitely one of our top contenders this year. Uh, Blue Valley North as well. Uh, they have a couple of young bucks on their team that uh, know how to score, so yeah, they're, 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 they're those two teams that we're, we need to look out for. this year's team? Well, it's about how you practice. Um, it's a relatively short season. Um, and, you know, the scoring is a big thing, but all, obviously once you get a couple weeks into the season and you're playing tournaments every week, then it's about your practice habits. Um, you can't just play every single day and get better. You've got to know um, what you need to work on. You got to know the right way to approach practice. Um, practicing golf sometimes is being out there by yourself for hours at a time where you're just working on your game and you're not actually playing holes. And that's sometimes not extremely fun. Uh, that's a little bit of the grit and the grind that takes place in order to get better. And that's something that uh, if we can do, which we will, uh, then we'll be our best at the end of the year. For the guys, um, so what is your favorite tournament out of your whole season? Uh, so our favorite tournament would be the any tournament we go out of town. It's just a good time, travel with the team, stay overnight at a hotel, really get to bond with the team and play with different teams that you don't usually play with back here. Yeah, for sure. So this year we're going to Carthus, Missouri, uh, April 15th and 16th. Uh, so we're going up there and we're going to try to bring home a championship. That'd be that'd be pretty sweet. But yeah, it's just season grind, you know, it never stops and you just got to go for winning. That's the only thing we're here for. Uh, He's shy. Oh. <laughs> My favorite tournament uh, is for sure the state tournament. Uh, I like playing uh, everyone from uh, Eastern Kansas and all over Western Kansas because we don't usually get to play them during the season so it's fun to play with them um, at the end of the year and see uh, how we compare with all them. Alright, Coach Grove, I asked you pretty much the same question basketball season. You lost a couple guys to like the West. Um, are they going to be a threat in the golf season or and and how how do you fill the void of a couple of the guys that left? You know, to be honest with you, I'm not concerned at all about those that are late for West. So we're wishing the best of luck besides when we compete against them. Uh, we've got a group of guys that can win. And we've got a group of guys that are going to practice to win each and every day. And, and that's really all that I'm concerned about. And that's all I'm worried about. Yeah. I'd, I'd say we're not here to worry about late the West. We're here about us and um, Worrying on our focus to win, not theirs. Coach, how has uh, Jackson impacted the younger underclassmen? He's been a really good uh, uh, ambassador and role model. Um, it's something that he was able to learn um, with having some older players in front of him. And then uh, he's been able to take on that role, and he's done a great job. And obviously he's going uh, signed to, to play at Washburn next year, which is a very, very good Division II. Uh, golf program, and uh, he's deserving of that, and, and uh, his leadership and his role modeling will be very important to our success this year. Um, going back to what Roan said, um, you coach basketball, so how is the atmosphere different from golf? Yeah, it's, it's a little bit different in that uh, uh, it's, a, it's an atmosphere where you've got to stay relaxed. Um, you know, it's, you're, you can't get yourself real intense not only playing or coaching. Um, it's more about course management and your practice habits over a seven week time period that decides how good you'll play individually, but then collectively as a team, how well your team will play. And so it, it is a diff different atmosphere, um, but it's one that I truly enjoy and, and the guys do a good job with their, the, the way they behave and their course management. And so, yeah, it is different though. 
All right, and that's all the questions that we have time for today. Thank you to the golf team for coming out. We'll be back after a quick commercial with the track team. Thank you. Throw me some easy questions or else. Don't easy. with the 2017 Spring Media Day. We're now joined by Coach Stevens and part of the track team. Last year, the girls placed second at state and the boys just finished a few points off the leaderboard. They had some great individual finishes from both the boys and girls. Uh, Coach, do you have anything that you'd like to say about this year's team? Yeah, we're really excited about uh, the possibilities of the season this year. We've got a lot of returning athletes on the girls' side. Uh, you know, track is such a unique sport where you're competing individually, but then there's also the big team aspect of it. So uh, the girls have a great opportunity if they can pull together, uh, sacrifice, kind of work as a team together to, to get back on that podium. You know, the goal is we want to be in the top three, obviously, and last year I know they fell just short. Um, you know, getting second place, came down to the last event, and so it was kind of a tough one. But uh, I feel like we've got enough pieces that we could put together uh, with some new people coming in and, and the, re the returners that they can make a good run. And on the boys' side, uh, we've got some great individual uh, competitors as well. And I know some kids are stepping it up so far in practice, and uh, I see a good opportunity for them to, uh, to make uh, a, a rise on that leaderboard. All right, uh, reporters, questions for you? Stevens. Um, so you are a new coach here. What experience do you bring to the track team? So uh, I was an assistant coach for 20 years um, and a head coach at uh, a college in Olathe for two years. And so I, I have a lot of, uh, I feel like I have a lot of things I can bring to the table to, to help our kids improve. Um, I was a part of 11 state championships and I coached uh, six or seven individual state champions as well. And so I, again, I feel like I know a lot, uh, a lot about the sport and I've been around it my whole life. I competed myself. Uh, so I kind of know what it takes for them to win and to be successful. To Olathe West. Um, so, what will the what do the athletes have to do to step up and fill those gaps? Um, you know, we have to be able to piece together a complete team. Uh, again, there's so many different events in a track meet that you have to have competitors that can do multiple things and be successful in uh, multiple events. And so I feel like we have kids that we're going to be able to uh, put into multiple events that can then help us to be successful. Um, Michael, as a thrower, how do you train to be better than every other thrower? Well, you have to bake, uh, break it down from technique and uh, lifting, and you really have to take your time while you're spinning and making sure that everything is perfect to the touch. Um, Allison, so you were part of that second place state team last year. Um, what do you girl is going to do this year to step it up and go back at that title again? Um, well, we've always had the talent. It's just a matter of execution. Uh, basically, we just got to keep our heads in the, focused in, in the game the whole entire season and just make sure that when we go to the state meet this year that everyone's ready to do their job. Coach Stevens, so you left Olathe East. Um, so are you looking forward to running against them this year? You know, they've kind of set the bar 
for track and field in Olathe uh, in terms of their success. And so anytime you get a chance to go head to head uh, against a team that's been very successful, you always want to, you know, uh, do your best and compete and, and ultimately come out, you know, victorious in that matchup. I know a lot of the kids over there. I know, I know all the coaches over there. And so for us to go in and, and uh, kind of uh, compete against them and be successful would be uh, a lot of fun for me. Uh, there are only 15 seniors this year. Are you concerned about how that's going to play out in the season? You know, it, it is a smaller group, but uh, the group that we have uh, are very dynamic and very diverse. They can do a lot of different things uh, to step in and help us. Uh, a lot of them are great leaders, and so, you know, track, you need to have leadership out there that the younger kids can then follow and, you know, do the things that are right and uh, have good work ethic and, and work habits. So I think that those 15 are doing a good job so far in leading uh, our other athletes, and hopefully they'll rub off on them a little bit so that they can, you know, continue that trend down the road. All right, and that's all the questions we'll have time for today. Thank you to the track team for coming out. Uh, after this quick break, we'll be back with the girls' soccer team. And we are back at the 2017 Spring Media Day. We're now joined by Coach Graham and the soccer team. They went 14-4-1 and one last year on the road to a regional championship, and they have several great players returning this year from last year's squad. Uh, Coach Graham, do you have any opening statements? Uh, yeah, just excited about the opportunity to, uh, to come back after a – Winning a first league title uh, in school history for us and our program, I'm, I'm excited to get a, a big group of kids to come back and um, have a chance to compete for another one. So, All right, reporters, questions to you. Coach, you got the chance to coach bowling this year and you were not able to run the conditioning. Were they in shape at tryouts? Uh, it's actually a very good question, Nick. Um, we uh, Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, we actually last year went to more of a senior-led uh, conditioning, so this was not actually the first year that I didn't, I didn't run it. Um, we actually went to that last year because I wanted the girls to have more of an ownership in the build-up to stuff. Um, and I thought really, for the most part, this year we had – a smaller group uh, that showed up pretty consistently to conditioning uh, that was led by these two really and they, they really did a good job with that small group so those kids that were there were, were definitely in shape uh, most of them were, were ready to go so coach you have five seniors on your varsity roster do you believe that these seniors can bring the same leadership that you lost from last year um, every year is different so I don't expect I don't expect our five seniors this year to be the six or seven seniors that we had last year. I just expect them to be themselves and to, to lead our program the best way that they can. And I think that they each bring something different to the team. And we talk a lot about that, about each player has a role that they have to fill and, and they don't all need to be the exact same. So each of our seniors does something a little bit different and brings something different to the table. And that's, that's what we need them to do. Uh, who are you really excited about seeing this year? Like, who do you think has grown over the off season, and who do you think can really help out the team more than they did last year? Uh, to be honest with you, I think we need every player that was a part of our program last year at the varsity level to to have improved and to be at the same level and be better than they were last year. Um, you know, we didn't we didn't lose a huge group of kids last year, but uh, a couple of them that we definitely lost that were were long term parts of our team, and so we need each of our kids to have improved. I'm excited about seeing the whole group compete and you get to a point where you're 
and I'm sure they're sick of practicing and ready to play. So I think we're all ready to kind of get that first game under our belt and see where we're at. Well, speaking of practice, Coach, what's the difference between a preseason practice and like a midseason practice three or four weeks into the season? Uh, it kind of depends on like during the week because we play typically Tuesday, Thursday. So, you know, Wednesdays will typically be more of a recovery session for us. Um, we might train a little bit harder on Fridays for a shorter amount of time, but it just kind of depends on the week and the, and the games that we have ahead of us. Maddie, Taylor's for you guys. You guys are part of the regional team in 2015 that won the regionals. Uh, do you guys see any, any qualities in this year's team? Is that year's team? Yeah, I think we have a lot of um, things that we can put together that will show that what happened when we won regionals, and we're really just going to push through and make sure we do that again. Good job. Thanks. What games then are you guys looking forward to this year then? Like, which team do you want to play? Um, I'm looking forward to playing Olathe West and Olathe East and Shawnee Mission West. Those are always good games, and I'm just – so that Olathe West game won't be a competition, we can hear it now. Uh, wait, uh, this is for well, this is for you too, Graham. If you want to yeah. step in, but which former player for you guys, past four years, has really like helped you guys in your soccer careers and become better leaders this year? Like who graduated? Yeah, who graduated? Former players. Do you want to say one else? Um, for me, Savannah Moxley, she was a like a leader and she had been on varsity all four years, so losing her and her like playing abilities will definitely like be a loss, but I'm sure we'll be okay without her. Uh, for me, uh, Sophia Lotterella, she really just brought a lot of like fun and <laughs> just a lot of fun and um, energetic spirit to the team and she was a really good leader as well. Uh, um, um, it's your third support of the year. Are you tired yet? <laughs> nope. <laughs> Three seasons in, your hair still looks great. <laughs> <laughs> Always does. <clears throat> Maddie Taylor, do you guys plan to continue your soccer careers after high school? I'm not. No. <laughs> and this one's for you, big guy. <laughs> <clears throat> You've had success here, boys and girls. You were the Sunfire League Coach of the Year last year, one of them. Is it you and your coaching ability, or is it the players? Uh, I'm the same coach that also went, I think, uh, five and 11 or five and 12 one year. So it, I would say that yes is from the time that I started to where I'm at now, I'm, I think I'm a better coach than I was. But any coach is also gonna tell you that they're as good as the talent that they have and the kids that they have that are part of the program. So uh, I've been very fortunate to have not only talented kids, but very, just all around good kids for the most part that have been a part of our program and and um, uh, I, that I mean that's that it's not about either the kids or the coach it's about the program as a whole so I looked it up this morning and the state championship is going to be held at Seaback. how important is it to you guys to get there and possibly play in front of your less than a mile away no I think it'd be great you know that that's kind of the last hurdle that we've got to get to is we've we've gotten to a regional final and and we've won the regional championship and gotten to the state quarterfinal and we just haven't been able to get quite over that hurdle and I, I I'd like to do that and especially a year where Seaback is hosting and we'd be right there in the community so all right and that's all the questions we have time for today thank you to the soccer team for coming out Thanks. uh right after the break we'll have uh new interviews with baseball Welcome back to the 2017 Spring Media Day. We're now joined by Coach Setter and the baseball team. Last season, they went to state for the first time in several years at behind a 16-9 and nine, uh, record. They're led by uh, seven seniors this year. Uh, Coach, do you have any opening statements? 
Uh, yeah, first of all, we're excited about this year. Um, coming off a year where we were regional champs and won a game in state and got fourth place in state, which is the best uh, we've ever had. Uh, we're really looking forward to building on that. We got a lot of guys coming back who played last year, plus a bunch of guys who suited up. We got um, juniors and seniors all ready to go this year. All right, reporters, questions? So my first question is about uh, like aspects, so hitting, pitching, all those things. What is a key thing you look to improve on this season that you think will overall maybe advance your um, chances in the state tournament? Uh, I don't think we really need to improve. Uh, we need to uh, – I think pitching is going to be a big thing for us because um, Brady pitched a lot for us last year, but we lost a lot of our senior pitching, and so we got to get some new guys um, into the games uh, this Saturday. Uh, we got a doubleheader, and we're going to get some guys from their first varsity experience. I think so. I think we're we're really good. Most of the guys who are hitting, uh, they all hit last year at least a couple of times on varsity, but we just need to get a little bit more experience um, behind Drake and. Brady. Brady and, and um, Hagerty here on the mound from last year. So after coming, a fan, coming off a fantastic season last year, how do you guys keep that intensity going on to the state tournament, and will you guys have that goal of getting back to the state tournament and possibly winning it? Well, uh, I think really it's just that we want to, our, like, our motivation is improving and like ending our season with a win. We want to we wanna do better than we did last year and like our ultimate goal would be winning a state championship. So another thing you look to build off of the season, the younger players. There's, do you think that you want to build on younger players now so that later you can have more successful varsity seasons or are you just focused on now? Uh, we're always definitely focused on now. I don't think that'd be fair to the seniors. Uh, and we've got such a great senior and junior class. Uh, we're not really going to rely on freshmen or sophomore, um, especially in our program, to be a sophomore on the varsity team starting. You've got to be a pretty special player. Uh, and so uh, right now, seniors and juniors, they're going to be, they're going to take the load. Um, now, if we have an injury or two, maybe some young guys will come up, but right now, the seniors and juniors Juniors will take the load for us. What are you most excited about this season? Well, I'm most excited playing with our teammates for a final year. Last year was a whole lot of fun, and we just want to build on and win a state championship this year. So that's what I'm really looking forward to. After losing some players to West, do you think that you want to go out there and um, kind of prove to them that you didn't really lose anything and that you filled that void? Um, we're, we're focused on Stockton, Missouri right now because that's our next game. Um, we're not going to worry about Olathe West, Olathe North, Olathe South. Not, for us, every game is the same. And um, so we have nothing to prove to anybody. We only, w the only people that can beat us is us. And we're focusing on us and getting better every day. So Coach Setter, what do you love about this group of guys and what are your expectations of them this year than last year? Uh, I love these, I, I mean, I've been lucky with this group of guys. I mean, I've got three guys who I also had their older brother, so I've known the family for a long time. Um, and this group is a fun group to, to coach. Um, they have, uh, you know, every group is a little bit different. This group is a little bit, a little bit more fun loving group and stuff like that. Other than Brady, he's kind of quiet, but um, he still has a lot of fun. Uh, and I, my main thing is to push him. Uh, I want to push them to become better. Uh, they work really hard in the off season. Uh, these guys play a lot of games during the summer and in the fall. And my job is to bring them all together as they've been playing for all these different summer teams and to bring them all together and, and come together as a team to gel at the right time of the season and to push them um, in that way. This is mainly for the players. How do you think losing the intensity and leadership of someone like Ben Owens last year is going to affect your team? Um, I mean, yeah, it does, like, it does affect our team, but <clears throat> that just means that someone needs to step up and, like, match what he did and, like, be this year's Ben Owens, like, I guess. You just you have to have someone that's going to act the way that he did and get the team fired up like he did. 
Do you guys have a game or team that you guys are looking forward to play this year? Um, we're just looking forward to the games this weekend. Get like one step at a time. So is there anything you've added, like you obviously already started practice, so is there any drills or uh, practice techniques that you do that you think were different from last year and will impact your uh, team this year? Uh, Coach Sutter's new favorite drill is using two pitching machines at the same time. And uh, it's a little scary because uh, he has put the, the both balls in at the same time a couple <laughs> times. And it, it's just he's trying to get us to like see different pitches and not just like sit there and hit the same one over and over and over again. Uh, you guys had your first game Tuesday, so how have you guys changed any strategies? Oh, no, not really. I mean, Tuesday, every game is different, and, um, you know, we had we needed to make an adjustment uh, to the umpire, and we didn't, um, neither did they. They One game, in baseball, uh, a lot of times people look at one game and make way too many assumptions. Um, and the most heavily scrutinized game of a baseball season is the first game. And we just gotta take what we did, learn from it, and move on. It doesn't mean that I'm gonna change anything as a coach after what happened in the first game. And, you know, I, even if I play some different guys this weekend, it was, that was already pre-planned, because I wanna get some more people in the game. All right, and that's all the time we have for questions today. Thank you to the baseball team for coming out. Uh, next, after this quick break, we'll have the state champion softball team. And now congratulations go to the 2017 Kansas Class 6 a State Softball Champion. <laughs> I've gotten better. <laughs> I like the mullet look he's got going here. This is on the top. <laughs> All right, welcome back to the 2017 Spring Media Day. We're now joined by Coach Mahoney and the softball team who were state champions last year behind senior leaders like Maddie Young. They went near undefeated, only dropping one game throughout the entire season, and the seniors this year are looking to repeat. Uh, Mahoney, do you have anything that you'd like to say? Uh, each year is a new challenge. I mean, you lose seven seniors, uh, six or four-year starters. They only lost nine games in four years. Uh, that's that's tough shoes to fill regardless of who you are, but uh, very excited about this year. Uh, two seniors that I've known for a very long time, and uh, they're looking forward to the challenge and, and continue the legacy that we've built here over the last 12 years. All right, reporters, questions? All right, so you had a nearly, nearly perfect season last year, 24 and one, with obviously the 6A state title. Uh, so, how do you plan to follow that up this year? Like, what's the mentality? Uh, our mentality is to win a regional title, win a Sunflower League title, and, and play for a state title. That's that's easy to say. Um, you know, we've we've been in there quite a bit, um, but we have very high expectations for ourselves. And, and if we lowered them, I think that would. Um, lose some of everything we've built for it. So, so we, you know, we're ready to, to win a Sunfire League title first and go from there. But um, just to play the state championship is not easy to do. Uh, to win it and everything else is, is even harder to do. And um, we understand that and are very grateful for what we have. But um, we're going to go back to work and, and be ready to play next week. It's looking like there's going to be a lot of turnover from last season with the loss of seven seniors and now having only two seniors this year. How do you plan to adjust for the big loss of upperclassmen? Um, obviously, we knew this was coming uh, a couple years ago, and, and my staff and myself have talked about it. And this year has been uh, a challenge, but it's been fun because we're, we're uh, you know, half your roster is gone, and, and we have an opportunity to, to challenge each other, uh, fight for positions, and uh, uh, build new relationships. Uh, I think that's what high school coaching is about. You, you, you get 
into a building and these are the kids you have and you get to, to bond with them and find out uh, what makes them tick and, and you want to put them in the best positions possible and uh, that's what we're trying to do and uh, it's a process and, and we're going to continue that process every day. So uh, speaking of loss of, up, of uh, upperclassmen, uh, you lost a Gatorade Player of the Year last year, Matty Young. How much, is, how much does that affect the team this year? I mean, that's tough. I mean, she's, she's starting in college every game as well. So uh, she's a special athlete. We were lucky enough to have her for four years. But um, people don't realize when Maddie Young was a freshman, she hit nine hole and hit about 200. So uh, we have new freshmen and new sophomores and new juniors that are in that same boat. It takes a long time to get where she got. And uh, these girls have worked extremely hard to get where they're at. So um, like I said, it's, it doesn't come easy. But anytime you lose a senior, uh, it's tough, and, and we're happy we had her and happy for her, her future, but uh, we're focused on what we have now, and we're very excited about that. Shane and Alyssa, uh, <clears throat> with all the seniors gone, how much do you think you have to put on yourself to do good for the team to succeed? How much pressure, I mean? Um, I don't think we really have a lot of pressure on ourselves just because um, a lot of the underclassmen who are on varsity this year have already know the drill and like Shana and I have been, you know, playing varsity too and we know what's going on, but it's a team sport, so everyone has to put in effort, so it's not just on us too. But we're definitely there to guide and help and be a leader for anyone who needs it. What kind of legacy are you guys um, looking to leave when you guys are gone? Um, oh, I'm just looking to leave here just with a good attitude and hoping the season ends right, no matter how, which way it goes. I'm just hoping that we leave like a leading role for the young ones and hopefully they have someone to follow in the future. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna sneak and get a lineup. One, two, three, four. <laughs> no. <laughs> All right. So Shana, uh, next year you go to University of Northern Colorado, a uh, big stuff there, D1 school. So what's what's how does the excitement for for playing for D1 school next year play into the high school season this year? Um, I am. I'm looking forward to going to college next year, but I'm trying to finish off here with a good note. Um. I'm excited to play my last season. I'm a little nervous, but it's going to be tough leaving here. But I think once I get to college, I'm going to learn so much more. And that's what I, one thing I'm looking forward to. What game are you guys most looking forward to this season? Um, we definitely look forward to playing LA the South every year because they're our biggest competition and they always put up a fight. But also we have a new school, Olathe the West, and I think everyone's just excited to play them. And we know some of the players on that team, we know that coach, and we're just excited to see them. Um, I'm looking forward to honestly playing Olathe the East, just to see like what they, how they react, like how since last year, I'm just excited to see like how that game goes off. Uh, what are you most excited for this season, other than opponents? Um, I'm excited to um, like have new relationships with the young ones because it, it is a lot of um, new girls on the team. So I think the team chemistry, I'm excited to see where that goes. Um, I would say that I'm mostly excited to uh, TP Mahoney's house. And uh, yeah, last year it was a pretty creative thing they did, so this year we're looking to top that. How do you feel about that? <laughs> about what? TP in the house. Yeah, how do you feel about that? Did you guys have some stuff before last? You know, it's, it's, it's a pretty cool tradition. Uh, 12 years ago we were here and uh, we had seven wins in three years. Um, the second year we were here we won, won regionals and one of my players' father was a cop. <laughs> found my address and the girls teepeed it a little bit, a little, little chalk, it was nice, cute, and funny. <laughs> As the years have progressed and you win nine regional titles, they get pretty creative and they always want to top each other and uh, it becomes fun. Last year we were prepared, <laughs> my house was prepared with water balloons. Um, we, we got a sneak peek on when they were coming, but 
it's something that that's what high school high school softball high school sports is about is to build traditions to build memories because we're going to forget that we lost a, a game you know a month ago but you're going to remember the night you spent the night and you got to tp someone's house or or have a sleepover or, or go to sonic those type of things and i think that's what we try to do most in our program is to build relationships and to build memories um, because the season goes by so fast and we shouldn't be singled out because we won a bunch of games or lost games. We should be singled out for, for the, the product we put on the field and the product we put in the hallways. And uh, I hope they get a team in my house. That means we're going back to state and get another shot at it. So bring it on, ladies. Fun up in the any anytime soon. Egg in the house. No. We have rules. Yeah, we're not allowed to do that. There's, there's rules. I can't expire all the rules, no but there are rules. <laughs> can't touch grass. No glitter. <laughs> Yes. So with uh, only two seniors this year, uh, do you plan on kind of like continuing the culture from last year, the winning culture, or just like the culture of the team, the attitude, or do you plan on just kind of like recreating a new team culture with the team being relatively young this year? That's a really good question. Uh, that's a really good question. Um, you know, the culture has been, been paced by the years, the years past. Um, the traditions have been passed down. Shea didn't know what to do. Alyssa didn't know what to do as a freshman. They've learned as the years. They've added on to it. We've deleted a couple things, but it's their team. Um, you know, I'm there to coach and, and do my job, but it's their team. They're the ones that get to play. Uh, and before you know it, you don't get to play anymore. So, so their job is to, to build the culture, uh, build an attitude, build traditions. And one of the things that we ask is when they leave, to pass that torch down. And uh, we've done a really good job with that over the last 12 years. All right, and that'll be it for Spring Media Day. Thank you to all the players and coaches who participated and helped us out. Thank you to the athletic department for allowing this to happen. And thank you to the Convergence team for running the show today. I'm Jack Clayton, signing out. <laughs>